預射啊等等嘅資料嚇。咁就誒與、嗯、會嘅所有專家同埋委員咧，都回顧咗近日世界各地出現咗嘅變異病毒株 Omicron 嘅情況，尤其係咧香港我哋面對嘅風險。呃、我哋亦都係睇咗啲海外嘅一啲、嗯、疫苗注射嘅科學數據，以及本地嘅研究資料。咁我哋今日嘅討論主要係兩個大嘅課題嘅，分別就係、是呃、第一，成年人士喺復必泰第三針嘅安排。咁稍後咧，我會請阿許教授咧同大家介紹一下。另外一個課題咧就係十八歲以下嘅市民咧嘅疫苗注射嘅一啲考慮。咁咧陣間我會請阿劉教授介紹一下嘅。咁我將我將個時間咧交俾許教授先，唔該你。好，唔該。咁我哋今日係檢視咗海外同埋啲本地數據啦，咁就作出一啲建議。咁、這、呢個誒，隨住呢個 omicron 喺世界各地擴散咧，咁而家我哋都係強烈建議就係一定要接種疫苗。接種咗疫苗咧，係可以減低嚴重程度同埋減低呢個病發症。咁如果未打嘅誒社會嘅人士咧，就盡快要接種。咁另外咧，就係如果係十八歲以上係已經咗已經打咗兩針。無論係復必泰或者科興咧，咁我哋都建議係打第三針啊。咁當然第三針嗰個選擇就係市民可以嘅決定啦。咁第三針咧就應該係喺第二針之後嘅六個月就可以接種，就除非係嗰啲免疫系統失調嘅人士，佢哋可以係早啲嘅，可以就算甚至乎係四個禮拜第二針之後可以早啲打。其他人士咧就係、是、建議係第二針之後嘅六個月打。咁當然啦，有部分人可能佢有啲特別需要，可能佢要去啲高危國家工作或者係誒讀書進修，咁佢哋係可以係早啲打，就唔需要等六個月，但係就起碼都等三個月先啦，即、就、係、是、第二劑之後嘅三個月至六個月，如果有需要嘅人可以去早啲打。咁另外咧就係喺誒孕婦同埋呢個係誒喂奶嗰啲女士咧，而家喺海外都好多數據咧，就係、是、如果打呢個核酸疫苗咧。其實都係誒好好嘅安全數據，所以都係建議啲誒女士，如果係懷孕或者係哺乳嘅女士咧，都係需要接種第三針。咁啊，同一般人冇分個時間上冇冇乜分別嘅。咁至於康復者咧，就係、是、誒一直都有建議康復咗之後咧，如果係要打復必泰咧，係可以等出院之後嘅九十日，又或者係如果打科興咧，就係、是、出院之後嘅半年啦。咁隨住時間咧，因為嗰啲抗體都係會跌嘅，咁所以咧都係有需要咧係打第二劑。咁、呃、如果係第二劑嘅話咧，一般嚟講就係、是呃、如果你係打復必泰嘅話咧，咁係即係打完之後嘅六個月之後係可以打。咁亦都一樣啦。如果係有特別需要，譬如係要去海外公幹或者讀書嘅人士咧，佢亦都係可以打完嗰一針之後嘅三至六個月係可以提早打嘅。咁跟住時間應係佢嘅細路仔嘅數據。好，唔該曬。咁我請上，我請阿劉教授介紹一下小朋友或者我哋青少年嗰個誒疫苗注射考慮。好啊，咁我哋咧就誒、呃、針對咗兩方面啦。誒、呃、第一方面，大家都記得喺九月嗰陣時同大家見面嗰陣時，就係因為誒 Cominati 即係伏必泰打完針有心肌炎嗰個問題，主要係呈現喺誒、呃、青少年男生。誒第二針之後，所以當時嘅決策咧，就將兩針變做一針咁樣樣嘅。誒，相信市民或者傳媒都會記得，當時就評估咗佢嗰個風險同埋個效益而作出咁樣嘅決定嘅。咁但係當然九月到而家又過咗三個月啦，咁就有好多都嘅情況已經係改變啦。第一樣嘅梗係 omicron 啦，大家都知。咁誒，第二樣嘢咧，亦～開始積累咗唔少嘅經驗同埋數據，誒講俾我哋聽，其實誒伏必泰如果嗰兩針拉長啲，亦即係話第一針同埋第二針相隔嘅距離冇跟之前嗰個推介係廿一日，而將佢延長咗之後咧，都已經有數據講俾我哋聽，延長咗嗰個區間之後，佢得出嚟嘅免疫反應係會好啲。不就只係咁樣樣，佢甚至我哋最關心嘅心肌炎嗰個發生率都會減低。咁當然我哋審視咗好多數據啦，咁我就用翻喺加拿大一個人口全人口一個誒、呃、研究報告俾大家知。咁佢嗰個回顧性一個文章嚟講咧，就係、是、如果嗰兩針
嗰個相隔係少過三日，即係廿一日啦，或者廿八日咧，咁喺男生十八歲到到廿四歲嗰個羣組咧，嗰、那個心肌炎嘅發生率咧，就係、是、大概一萬個有一個，一萬個一個。咁如果將嗰個區間增長到三十一日到五十五日咧，佢就會跌到零點六，每一萬個有零點六個 case。如果將個區間再延長大過五十六日嘅話咧，佢就會將佢減低到大概係零點一每一萬針。咁換句説話嚟講，將兩針嘅區間由而家譬如廿一日，一路將佢拉長到最低限度，譬如三個月咧。如果根據呢個數據咧，我哋就可以誒減低。打第二針嗰個風險到十分一咁多，咁基於而家 Omicron 試藥啦，喺全球超過一百個國家誒喺度迅速擴散，咁亦知道好多數據，尤其是係未打到針嘅細路仔嚟講，因為唔係個個國家都打到十二歲或者好少國家係打到五歲或者三歲以下嘅。咁喺嗰度嗰啲經驗咧，譬如喺美國，咁佢哋而家發現主要誒一個羣組增加得最迅速嘅咧，就係細路仔，就係細路仔，五到十四歲，佢增加得好迅速。咁當然大家都知道，兒童嗰個發生重症嘅係比成年人老人家係少嘅，但係當你嗰個數量係好大嗰陣時咧，自然就會有細路仔有比較重嘅病要入醫院。咁呢一個經驗咧，喺歐洲都見到啦。唔淨止係話細路仔，係嗰啲細路仔咧，有七成到八成咧，係冇其他啲有威脅生命嘅疾病嘅，即係有癌症啊，或者係誒、呃、要腎臟有好大嘅問題要移植啊，誒使佢嗰啲。咁亦換句説話嚟講，而家呢個新幾月，因為啲細路仔未打針。而因為 Omicron 試藥或者喺個國家控制得唔好咧，其中一個主要嘅觀察咧，就細路仔咧都係一個高風險嘅羣組啦。咁南非亦有咁樣嘅經驗嘅，因為佢大家都知道，佢喺十一月中下旬嗰陣時咧，就係佢哋講俾全世界聽 ，WHO 聽有呢個新嘅變種。咁當然香港誒頭一兩個 case， 香港都有一個 case 係南非。誒翻嚟嘅，咁佢哋又檢視咗佢嗰啲誒數據嘅。咁如果細路仔嚟講咧，喺南非個經驗咧，如果係嗰個 omicron 咧，都似乎佢會受到啲細路仔入院個機率係增加咗百分之二十。即係總觀頭先我講喺美國、喺歐洲、好南南非嗰個觀察咧，我哋都要重視細路仔。接種呢個疫苗呢、這個問題嘅，咁所以經過咗我哋好長進嘅分析啦、辯論啦，咁我哋就覺得喺香港由九月開始，委員會話由兩針變一針之後，大概有一定嘅數目嘅小朋友，由十二歲到十七歲咧，就打咗一針嘅啫。由十二歲到十五歲嗰個羣組咧，喺十二月十四號個數據咧，就大概有一十五萬九千八百個係打咗第一針，打咗第二針就係十萬三千。咁將兩個數減咗之後咧，你就係大概得到五萬三千個喺呢個羣組係打咗一針嘅啫。咁另外十六到十七歲咧，打咗一針咧就有八萬一千四百人次。打咗第二針有六萬一千四百人次，將兩個數減咗之後咧，你就大概有二萬個。咁將兩條數加埋咧，咁香港喺十二月十四號咧，喺呢個羣組十二到十七歲咧，就大概有七萬三千個青少年係淨係打咗一針嘅啫。但係基於打咗一針之後，佢嘅抗體水平雖然算唔錯，咁但係大家都知道要有一個有效嘅免疫。預防兩針其實都,都走唔甩嘅，咁尤其是而家又有新嘅數據
，話如果你拉長咗嗰個區間，你係會得到更加好嘅保護，又減低個心肌炎到十分之一。咁我哋評估咗嗰個風險同埋好處之後咧，就推薦十二到十二歲到十七歲嘅青少年。就係、是、打咗一針嘅，而家佢可以打第二針，但係個區間咧不得少於不得少於十二個星期。咁另是因為仲有呢一個疑惑個心肌炎嗰度，咁我哋都知道，如果打肌肉注射有動物模型嗰個檢視咧，誒、呃、覺得有一個可能性，如果打喺嗰個大髀嘅旁邊。中間位就可能可能會減低呢個心肌炎，咁所以我哋都推薦咁誒喺呢一個羣組嘅青少年係可以打喺呢個大髀嗰度嘅。誒、呃、咁我而家就講到呢度，我交翻俾阿榮。好誒，咁、呃、以下提問時間，咁麻煩大家喺發問前先介紹你代表嘅機構。誒、呃，藍色衫呢位。Um, two questions from MultiHK. So um, my first question is about the adults. So um, I believe that the experts were considering to shorten um, the gap between the second and the third dose of BioNTech. Um, could you explain why um, you are still deciding um, for the adults to get the third jab um, six months after the second? Because I think you were um, uh, considering the, um, the Omicron. When you said that you may shorten the gap, and、um, my second question is about the teenagers.、Um, could you explain how、um, can the teenagers get the、um, booster gap、uh, while、um, keeping the risk of heart inflammation at a minimum? Thank you. Okay, thanks for your question. Maybe I leave the first question to um, um, Professor Hoi and the second question to Professor Lau, please. Well, currently there is no community. Outbreak of Omicron, and also that if you provide the third dose with time, the antibody will also drop anyway. So we're balancing the the risks and the benefit and the optimal timing for the purpose、uh, in Hong Kong. I think the six months would be optimal for the majority of the people. But as, as I said before, if you are、uh, in need to go overseas to study or for business reason, then you can actually have the third dose earlier. Between three to six months after the second dose. Professor Lau, please. <clears throat> okay, so I need to clarify a few conceptual issues. When you mention booster dose, I suppose you are talking about、um, the first and the second dose will constitute for commonality. That's the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine as a primary series. So you are asking about third dose. For other lessons. Actually, I, I meant second dose because、uh, the recommendation for teenagers to get the BioNTech jab is only one dose. All right. Okay. Fine. So now I carry with that clarification, I will sort of answer your question in this way. This is not a booster. So the second dose constitutes a part of the primary series, if you want to use that term, primary series for BioNTech, because all the studies on The safety as well as the efficacy for or effectiveness, for that matter, for BioNTech is based on the two-dose regimen. And the reason why the JSC recommended the adolescents in September to cut off the second dose is because the very high rate of myocarditis in male adolescents observed in Hong Kong and documented in Hong Kong. And that piece of data has already been published, so it's online. If you care to look it up, you could find, in fact, for the male adolescents between the 12 to 17, if you calculate it, is as high as one myocarditis case every 3,000 to 3,500, and that is much, much higher than that observed in the United States, reported by the CDC and FDA. And of course, there are multiple reasons for that discrepancy. The first is our surveillance is much. More robust and sensitive than that in the United States, but I'm not precluding other possible genetic factors, weight factors, ethnic factors, and so on. 
So based on that, in September, we cut off the second dose, resulting in approximately 70,000 adolescents of that age group did not complete the primary series with two doses, with only one dose. And now since September passed, and we've got two or three more months of data, and we analyzed the data and reached that conclusion, these 70,000 adolescents could consider, of course, they need to have their parents' consent to receive the second dose with an interval not less than 12 weeks. And of course, that must be informed consent, stating that that second dose uh, with the 12 weeks interval would result in the myocarditis rate reduced by at least one tenth, one tenth. So with that projection, I would think in Hong Kong, if you use the Hong Kong data, with the 21 days interval, for the very high risk male adolescent is one in 3,000 to 4,000, then it will be down to one in 30,000. So that is, of course, it's just a projection. Uh, it's not real data uh, as such. So uh, that is the conclusion uh, based on evolving situation and data plus the Omicron will be coming. And of course, I applaud our DH and CHP and many other staff who's managed to keep Omicron uh, from community spread as of now. But that may not last forever. So we must make sure our children and adolescents will be protected for their own health, but also prepare for the whole population in order to get the vaccine uptake rate to a more respectable level. And the situation why in some countries, like in Israel, you've heard the uptake rate is so high, and yet I think they are facing some issues with the Omicron, is because they have a large percentage of young people or young children that are still not receiving the vaccine. I've just read from the news, papers saying that uh, the very young and the young, young adolescents in Israel actually constitute, I, I can't remember the exact figures, it's very high, 20, 30%. And therefore, getting more children, adolescents eligible for vaccination must be one of the directions in terms of public health strategy to make our population immunity a bit more robust should the Omicron cannot be stopped and establish community transmission in Hong Kong. And we don't have that much time. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay,我想問一問呢,就是關於 第三條問題都想問關於孕婦的數據 因為我們都要看需要打針的市民究竟他符不符合打針的日子
第一個問題係關於復必泰點解都係維持六個月？咁主要嚟講就睇下個風險，因為香港而家都冇呢個 omicron 喺社區擴散，咁嗰個情況就唔係好似外國咁急。第二個原因咧就係，就算你打咗好強嘅疫苗，例如係復必泰，佢隨住時間個抗體都會跌嘅。咁海外都有啲數據，佢六個月都可能會跌四廿幾 percent 嚇。咁雖然如果你打科興，可能跌得仲多嘅。咁但係始終你打咗之後都會跌噶嘛，咁所以我哋建議咧就係如果一般嚟講咧，打完第二針之後咧，第三針咧就係打呢個復必泰咧係六個月，但係如果有部分人可能佢要緊急要去公幹或者係海外升學，咁佢哋可以提早打咯，就係、是、第二針之後嘅三至六個月都可以打。孕婦嗰方面咧，就嗰啲數據全部都係喺海外，就有非常多數據就係呢個核核糖核酸疫苗咧，喺孕婦係安全性高啦，亦都可以保護到嗰個 B 誒 B B 啦。咁所以就嗰個原則係一樣嘅，第三針同一般人一樣，都係即係建議係可以第二針之後嘅六個月打。咁至於科興咧，因為科興本身列咗誒懷孕係一個禁忌，所以就暫時嚟講就冇呢個修改。所以係孕婦就唔暫時嚟講就唔適合打科興，因為佢本身個廠未將呢個禁忌係刪除。誒，咁我咧誒想誒藉住呢一個問題咧，就向傳媒同埋市民講，其實打疫苗最重要係要預防重病，預防佢哋入醫院，預防佢哋入 ICU， 預防死亡。咁呢個就 WHO 同埋相關。誒好多誒監管機構都希望市民明白，包括美國嘅 CDC 誒等等。呢個第一點。咁新年落嚟之後咧，就講點解我哋決定喺普遍市民第三針嘅伏必泰係六個月為準基準，但係容許去到三個月，如果需要公幹啊去讀書等等，就基於兩方面嘢。係頭先講得到嘅好處係點樣樣？佢可能出現嘅風險係點樣樣？頭先 David 教授已經講咗啦。咁其實你打完三針伏必泰，即係頭兩針伏必泰，第三針伏必泰咧，誒我哋都審視過一啲誒數據由德國嚟嘅。咁就當然係我哋叫做未經同行審視噶啦嚇。咁其實傳媒朋友都可以揾到。佢打完第三針之後，佢對 Omicron 誒係會有提升。咁但係咧誒都有。大概有三成到係冇效嘅，而佢呢個有效性咧係大概維持三個月之後咧，已經係跌到二十五個 percent。亦即係話頭先 David 教授講好準確嘅，就係、是、你太早打，咁你得唔到佢嘅好處。咁所以我哋就覺得，如果我哋而家仲係動態清零嘅策略咧，其實可能可能誒遲少少打，可能個好處。係好過全部人都三個月就走咗去打，但係仍然用佢三個月。如果佢哋係要公幹或者去讀書，咁至於個風險咧，第三針都有嘅。專家委員會咧就係建議翻咧，十八歲以上人士如果已經打咗兩針疫苗嘅話咧，就不論係打科興定係復必泰疫苗咧，都係可以喺第二針之後嘅六個月之後咧，就建議佢哋咧係打翻第三針嘅一個嘅新冠疫苗嘅。嗱，至於啲青少年接種嘅問題啦，之前佢就打復必泰疫苗出現過心肌炎嘅問題啦。嗱，而家委員會就建議啦，十二至到十七歲嘅青少年咧可以打第二針嘅疫苗嘅。咁但係兩針嘅相距時間咧就由。原本嘅二十一日咧，係延長至到最少係要有十二個誒十二個星期嘅。嗱，關於現場情況咧，睇到呢度啦。时尚星火龙过红都发知，各大超市门市同 Panama 都有得卖啦。冬天不如试下呢个韩烧特性福袋啊！除咗有澳洲安格斯牛肉、日本宫崎猪同北海道大子，福袋仲配埋两款芝